Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about the newest update to Adobe Bridge 2020. If you've seen my other tutorials, you know that I'm a huge fan of Adobe Bridge. If I need to preview images, if I need to export out a bunch of different file formats, convert from camera raw to JPEG, ping, or what have you, I really love using Adobe Bridge. Oh yeah, and renaming video files too. I use it for that because it's lightweight, it loads quick, and it does things really, really fast. And if I was going to export out a bunch of images and convert them in the past, then I would have used this, which is in the Tools menu, Photoshop, Image Processor, which would launch through Photoshop and do a bunch of operations. Well, there's a new export panel. It's a heck of a lot easier. Let me show you that first. There's a few updates, but this is the big one. So behind the filter collections, there's a new panel, Export, and you can create new, um, presets. So when I click in here, it's going to open up a dialog box that looks a lot like an image kind of processor. So I'll name this to JPEG. JPEG, JPEG is the only uh, file format supported right now. Obviously, it's going to be updated with a bunch of features. But if you, if you try to drop down the, the menu, I'll show you in a sec, there's only the JPEG. Okay, so first of all, we get to name the preset and the preset will be over here on the left. The saving options, we can save it to uh, the original location or we could specify uh, a folder. I'll just browse to a folder that I'll use for bridge test. And you can save to a subfolder and name that too. If you come up with conflicts, you can create a unique name, overwrite the file, or skip the file. And this is if you're exporting back into a folder again, and some of the names don't line up, you want it to stop, you want it to overwrite, or you want a separate name completely. So this is the one you can't change right now. It's grayed out, even though there is a little uh, option to click here, you can't. You can change the overall quality. Um, and then you can scale. And this is really important when you're working with camera raw images. A lot of times I need to export out some lower resolution JPEGs just to either make sure somebody can view them because I am i don't know if they're going to open camera raw on the other side. So I'll spit out a bunch of uh, JPEGs and I'll almost always resize those too because you know, on something like my Canon 5D Mark III, it's a huge file and you don't want to give it to somebody. So I'll bring this down and you can scale this by percentage or you can, if you're dealing with horizontal and vertical images, you can scale based on the longest uh, length. So if I want a bunch of 2000 pixel images, I'm not really sure what percentage that is from the, the native camera raw. So I'll, in, instead of using scale, I'll use constrain to a certain size, and you can see the default here is HD, but I can type in 2000 pixels. That means if it encounters a horizontal image, it'll be 2000 pixels. If it's a vertical, it'll be 2000 pixels high. And then you can choose the resampling method, bilinear sucks, don't use it. So bicubic for smooth gradients and bicubic sharper, which is what most people will be doing, they'll be resizing down, not upresing, resizing down. So that's a good one to make it sharper. Okay, and then you can you can set the metadata here to include the original metadata. So here you get to choose all except camera raw info, copyright only, copyright and contact info, and you can remove the location. This is really important to some people. They want to publish their images, but they sure don't want to have that, that uh, location data stamped inside the file. You can also apply a metadata template. You can save those, apply it. They would show up in here. I don't have any saved, but you can apply that and add additional keywords down here. Once you're done, click Save, and it shows up down here. There it is, that one right there. So you drag stuff on top of this, and then you need to start. So I'm going to... Um, I've got a bunch of images here and I'm just going to go to the ones that I've starred and just grab some of these. So I'll, I'll grab a bunch of different ones here and I'll drag them into this new export preset. 
And you can see I get an update, one job, six files. They haven't started yet. I can close this if I want. I can view the progress. And when I open this up, there is there is no uh, progress. Oh, there's my previous one. There is no progress yet. So if I start the export, then it will open up the, the progress. And you can see now it's exporting those images. And it didn't have to load Photoshop to do that. This is a much quicker way to uh, process a whole bunch of images. So we'll have a look at that when it's done. So it is done, six exported. And if you click here, it will open that in Bridge. Let's close that up. So there are the uh, images, they're exported. And you can see down here, the export is 2000 pixels by 1333. So that's the new export panel, fantastic. Doesn't work by exporting up multiple stills from a video. I'm sure that's on the list for Adobe. Um, if you choose a video, it's going to take the first frame and export that out as a still. But next up is how things are previewed in, inside here. And the, the uh, content panel has always been something that uh, is, has been built for photographers. So it has the name, it has the stars, and it has the... Oh, just a whole bunch of ugly stuff. I want to look at my images. I just want to look at a bunch of thumbnails. Well, there's a new button down here at the bottom. Thumbnails only. Hallelujah. Look at this. Now I'm only looking at my thumbnails. Not all of that other data. And if I hit my tab key, I can close both the right and left panel. And now I'm just looking at my thumbnails. And of course, you can zoom these down at the bottom. So now I'm looking at my thumbnails in a big glorious view without having to deal with all of that extra data. So I'll turn that uh, back on. So if I turn this off, you can see I get useful information. Yes, I get ratings in here and I get the name of the file, but a lot of times I just want to look at my beautiful images. So let's keep going on here. I'm going to bring back my uh, panels. Let's size this back down and talk about tiles. And tiles is a new way to view this, to view your, your media. And you can see it shows up as a tile. Let's turn these on and off and you can see it sets them inside a tile for whatever, if you like that. You can also choose thumbnails and the tile at the same time and that's what it looks like. I'm tending to like this uh, thumbnails only view. Um, I, I think that looks good. Very important to understand that when you are turning thumbnails only on, it's only for that particular workspace. And you can see there's a bunch of workspaces up here at the top, including getting to your library files over here on the right hand side, all of my libraries. So if I have the tiles, if I have the thumbnails turned on here, and then I go to my libraries, you'll see I can see the name there. So it, it, it's not really, uh, it only works per workspace. But you could go and turn it on for each workspace. All right, uh, next up is the search. I've got a full tutorial on uh, using search, but now they've moved uh, stock down to here. And the top one is uh, search bridge current folder. And of course, there's an advanced search. But like I said, I've got a full tutorial on working with Adobe uh, Bridge and searching a folder or searching your whole computer. All right. And the last update is being able to finally see transparency in not. Let me just get rid of. Let's turn on the file types. Let's turn on the name so we can see that. So of course, we've had ping transparency where we can see the checkerboard, uh, the transparency, but you couldn't do that for PSD files. Yay, now you can. So this is a Photoshop layered file with all of its compositing and you're able to see that transparency now instead of just a, a uh, solid black background. So I really love that when now being able to see not only ping transparency, but finally PSD transparency. So there you've got the export panel, new tiles, new ways to look at things, great new searching features, and finally Photoshop transparency. Thank you Adobe for keeping Bridge alive. It was uh, it was a touch and go for a while. Uh, 
several years ago whether that was going to continue the application but it looks like everybody has uh, jumped on the bandwagon and you're using bridge for many operations doesn't matter if you're a photographer you like room photoshop or if you're using video and you're using it to rename files like i am here all right Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. If you want to support us some more, you can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description and one in the front of the channel. Thanks to all of our wonderful PayPal supporters. If you want to have a longer conversation with me, don't do it through comments. I hate YouTube comments. I can't find them anymore. Um, it's really difficult to try to have a conversation. Join us over on Facebook. There is a uh, link in the description for that. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you all excited about the new features in all your Adobe applications.